Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel and for those of you who were asking in the feedback post I made for shorter videos or just more concise, I'm going to try and do that here today so we're going to keep things brief. Let's go look at both sides and get started. First up is Molag the Mighty and his mob of, or menagerie of creatures with their newly updated objective cards and other cards. So Molag the Mighty in the middle there. 6 health, if ever he has 3 or more wound counters, everybody inspires. He has his bat squig, he has his stalag squig, which can deploy on can deploy on any tile that isn't an enemy starting hex. And the spike shroom, that's what he's called on the end there. And that is that. And Molag's mob will be going up against Dripper's Wraith Creepers, aka Horse Murder Ghosts. We have Viceroy Dripper, we have Grodrick the Lance, we have Sir Hackfell, Sire Hackfell, I'm just going to say Sir, and then the pat uh, Patrician on the end there. So that is the two sides that are going at it. Get them all deployed and whatnot off camera, so we're just ready to get started after this brief word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And here we are with everyone deployed ready for the game to start and it will be Molag's mob taking first activation in the first of three rounds. All that remains is to flip over for the camera where each objective is. We have three in Molag's part. We have five, four and three and then two and one over here for drippers, race creepers, or rather one and two, if you want to do them in the exact order. So with that, let's jump into round one and see how this plays out, with the horse murder ghosts always being very, very aggressive. The spite shroom got the game started, moving two with a movement action right there, just getting to position because if anyone ends a movement next to him and he lives, he just does true damage to them. And then in the power phase, Molex Mob played Unsurprising Fear, which just means you can drive away someone who's within two hexes of one of the horrible looking menagerie that Molag goes around with. There's the text if you wish to read it. He selected Grodrick the Ran Lance and pushed him back, but unfortunately he's back where he ended up because during their power phase, Drifting Death was played. So you picked two friendly fires and pushed them one hex towards the closest enemy. So Grudrick the, the Lance ended up back where he was. Sir Hackfell was pushed forward one closer. So that means when he activates he'll inspire because he's within two of Molag. And the Patrician, after the power phase ends, pushes Sir Hack. Oh, actually, no, he he's not going to take advantage of that because that would mean he takes some true damage because the Spike Shroom is there now. He was going to move one closer to. Uh, Molag, but the Spike Room is now the closest target. So no, the Patrician's passive is not going to be used this round, or not this activation anyway. So Grodrick the Lance activated, inspired because he had an enemy within two, the Spike Room in this case, which put him up to four hex movement. So he moved one, two, three, four, and as they are ghosts, they pass through targets, and that was important for what he then scored in a second. He swung that Lance of his though, or sorry, his glaive into the spike room, two dice looking for hammers and managed to whiff both of them. So no defense roll required, nothing achieved there. But he still scores Ethereal Hunters because he passed through the Stalic Shroom to get there. He also could have passed through the spike room itself. So, and it wasn't a push, so the... Actually, I don't think it has to be a push. The reaction might still happen in a second. Either way, he scores one for this, which was then spent to give him plus one wounds by giving him Deathly Vigor, which puts him up to 4 health. So, that might immediately just get overwritten by the passive from the Spectrum. Let's just read this. After an activation step, and yeah, the move action counts, and it's after the activation step. So, he is taking the one damage he's kind of covering with that Deathly Vigor. So, apologies, and during the power phase or step for Molag's mob, they paid T up, or rather, they played tee up the target. You can reroll one result of a double support in the attack roll for the first range 1 or range 2 attack action made by a friendly Molag in the next activation. Molag doesn't often aim, but when he does... Second activation for Molag's mob was the giant troll himself, and that reroll sort of came in handy. He did roll a double support, but it rerolled into swords, which was not what he was looking for for his range 2 makeshift club. Two dice looking for hammers with knockback one for three damage. He got that crit against Sir Hackfell who whiffed his defense roll so that just obliterates the skull under those robes and destroys him instantly dead. And with the one glory earned from that kill, 
getting hungry is being played it's an upgrade you apply to a minion it just means they're inspired from this point onwards even if this card gets broken so the spite shroom has been inspired to give him a bit more survivability because he gets two dice on his defense on his inspired side Viceroy Dripper had been moved forward, or is being moved forward, one hex because of the Patrician's passive after the activation and power phase for the opponent ends. Oh, it is a rough first round for Dripper's Wraith Creepers. Dripper himself activated, did a charge to the hex you can see him on, trying to stab at range 2 with that Hunter's Glaive of his to just take out the Spice Room, and was looking for hammers on two dice, and rolled none. Oh, wait, that single support counts, because of... Um, Roderick the Lance being there, never mind, a defense roll is required. He is rolling two defense dice because he's on his inspired side. Oh, and we'll have to pan down to see the result. He was looking for dodges and he doesn't have ensnare because he's not inspired yet. So he managed to block it. The spike room lives. And who can say which one of those wouldn't have been rolled had he not just inspired. So the card might have just saved his life. Oh boy, Molag went for the jugular after that, doing a charge action, such as it is with his very limited movement range, to just go and try and murder Viceroy Dripper, because if he landed the hit, well, it wouldn't have killed him, but it would have left him on one health remaining. He needed two or hammers on two dice. He got a crit, but Dripper on his two defense dice, he has that even if he isn't inspired, managed to roll a crit as well, so he fully blocked the hit. That would have been catastrophic if it had landed. Third activation in round one for Dripper's Wraith Creepers was the Patrician who did a charge action to try and hit the Spikes Room. Three dice he gets to roll. Oh, you can only see two of them. We're going to have to pan down a little bit. He's looking for swords though, and he is getting a single support, but not a double. So he managed to flatline and just get nothing. Their game is not shaping up to be great at the tail end of round one. That does also mean at the end of that activation, or specifically after an activation step, in which one or more enemy fighters have made a move action. Um, the Patrician is taking one damage, so he's down to three health remaining. Well, as if to just rub salt in that wound, the final activation of round one for Molag's mob was the Bat Squig who did a charge action just up to this hex here, and with the help of the Stalag Squig who's just waiting there patiently, attacked Glordrick to the lance. Three dice, also looking for swords, managed to get one of those and a crit to boot. He rolled one success, but the crit trumps all those. The Bat Squig only does one damage, so it's not super bad, but that does reduce Grodrick down to one health remaining. Oh no, sorry, two, because he had plus one from Deathly Vigor. Never mind. So he's still got two health left, and now it's over to one of those three to activate and be the last action for round one. Oh, right at the end of the round, Grodrick comes back out of nowhere to actually earn something and do something right for the Wraith Creepers. He activated, he did an attack action into the Spikes Room, two dice looking for hammers, got a crit, and although there is one success in the dodge roll, it was not a crit, so the spike shroom has been absolutely obliterated and is gone. That scores them one glory, no objective card, just the one glory for the kill, which they have spent to give Dripper Pal of Fear to try and improve his survivability. Minus one die from enemy fighters range one range to attack actions that target him. Just it improves his survivability quite a bit. Well, on the note of keeping things brief, at the end of round one, I have nothing to show you. Neither side is scoring any of their objective cards. The only glory gained this round was from Murder. And as we go into round two, Dripper's Wraith Creepers, they're down Sir Hackfell. And right at the end there, Molag's Mob lost the Spite Shroom. So, nothing else to cover. Let's jump into round two. As we start round two of three, here's the board state. And it is Dripper's Wraith Creepers who will be going first. Grodrick the Lance comes out the gate swinging in round two, just staying where he is and doing an attack action into the Stalag Squig. He's gone nuts, he's just attacking rocks, there's nothing suspicious about it at all. Two dice looking for hammers and this time his quality of roll has definitely improved. The Stalag Squig rolls two looking for shields, he did actually get one, but not good enough. So that is two damage and that takes out the poor innocent looking stone, which gives them one glory for the kill, no objective card scored again. And in the power phase, they are playing Fevered Beat. It basically just means that during this next activation from Molag's Mob, no matter what they're rolling, if they're doing an attack action, they're looking for swords rather than what they would normally look for. Oh, there is one more step in the power phase that just went there. Molag's Mob is playing Slippery as a squig. And it just means that the Bat Squig is going to be pushed to hexes in any direction, and he is being pushed that away. Just out of danger a little bit, he's out of the range where they can just get a free attack, they'd have to move to chase him. 
So Molag activated right where he is. He swung that gigantic club, remember, forced to look for swords because of fevered beat. He targeted the patrician so he didn't lose a die to the upgrade that Drepper has. And luckily for him, he rolled a crit, although that would have been a fantastic normal roll. And Drepper rolled, uh, sorry, the patrician rolls two dice looking for dodges. He rolled two blocks. So for the second time, Molag has just utterly shattered that horse skull under the robe. It's a very fun mental image and just batters him and he just falls apart on the floor and dies because he had one damage from being next to the spice room and that does three. So he is dead. That is one glory, no objective cards played in the power phase. Both sides did something though. Let's start with Molag. Uh, sorry, that glory was spent to give him the mighty and the meek. So I don't know if we've seen yet in the times he was on here previously. Enemy fighters cannot reroll attack or defense dice while they're adjacent to Molag the mighty. That's pretty cool. Heart Piercer was played by Dreper's Wraith Creepers. Play this only in your opponent's power step. The next range 2 attack action made by a friendly fire in the next activation has Cleave. This is what they're going to try and use to kill the Bat Squig. Well, Grodrick the Lance is back on form. He charged to go after the Bat Squig, staying at range 2, so Heart Piercer kicked in. Two dice, and he whiffed it. He whiffed it completely. And that's doubly bad. He would have got the glory for killing the back squig. There's also that objective card where if you do a cleave action, you, you score one or two points. So that was clearly what was happening here. And it didn't work. He whiffed it. That could cost them dearly. They are still ahead by one, though. Molag is on a rampage. He did a charge action to go after Grodrick to help out his precious, precious bat squig. Two dice. He rolled a crit again. And even though it's defense dice this time, Grodrick rolled the same as he just rolled and that's real bad for him because that is his, like if you hear a cracking sound, that's his skull getting shattered by that gigantic club because he is out of there. That He had two damage on him, he had four health and that would have been a total of five. So he is obliterated into pieces. Molag has killed everyone so far, leaving just Drepper on the table for the Wraith Creepers and scoring one glory. No other cards scored again on that kill, just the glory for the kill, which is not even being spent on anything. But he did really well. He is just claiming these these horse ghosts one by one. Well, the retort to his whole warband being utterly obliterated by a sleepy troll is not exactly fantastic. Viceroy Dreper activated and did a movement action to the hex that you can see him at, but he's clearly planning something. The Bat Squig is the second last activation from Molang's mob in round 2 and it just did a move action as well onto objective 4 just in case there's any kind of card where you hold more or anything just to try and balance it out just to potentially stop Drepper. And the last activation of round 2 for Drepper's Wraith Creepers, Drepper did another movement action and has moved on to objective 5 so that is one higher than the one the Squig went on to, I'm not sure if that's relevant or not. Either way He's holding there, that's their second round over. Molag can't activate because the Bat Squig doesn't have a charge token. It has to be him, and I don't think he's going to move, so either power cards or objective cards are probably going to get cycled here. So a power card was drawn since the objective cards do feel obtainable, even though they haven't yet. And with the power card drawn, they're going to spend their one unspent glory they had to give Spark of Sentience to the Bat Squig. It just, it, although it has the Stalic Squig on it, it's any minion that can get it. It just means after their activation, you can draw a power card. Presumably that kicks in, no, no, because the activation phase has already happened. So it doesn't kick in this turn, but from any other activations he gets in the final round, that will kick in. Alright, this is more like it. In the end phase of round two, both sides are actually scoring objective cards. It turns out they are capable of doing it sometimes. Let's go with Molag's Mob, but first, Ignore at Your Peril is scoring for one glory. It's scoring the end phase if there's one or more surviving minions and they're not adjacent to an enemy. That's what the Bat Squig is, so that scores for one, but they're also scoring two for Utter Carnage, which is very fitting for what Molag has done to these horse murder ghosts. Score this in an end phase if three or more enemy fighters are out of action or there's one or fewer surviving enemy fighters. Actually, both those criteria are true, and that scores for two. I didn't mean for that to rhyme leaving Molag's mob at 6 glory at the end of round 2, which is pretty good, considering they haven't been scoring cards. Um, for the Wraith Creepers, they are scoring... here it is. They are scoring Deathly Blooms for a whole 1 glory, which is just hold an objective in enemy territory, which is what Drepper is doing, and that means they are at 4. So as we go into the final round, Molag's mob is now leading by 2, and, well, Drepper's got that pal of fear to protect him a little bit, but... I think Molag's in a, a better position to take him out than vice versa, but who knows, we'll see. 
So here is the board state at the top of the third and final round and it is a Molex mob, what little of it is left, that will be taking first activation in an effort to go murder Dripper probably. So let's get on with it and see how things end. Well we've had our first big miss from Molag, he did a charge action to go down to Hackfell. Oh, actually he still has to lose the die even if it's range 2 doesn't he? Uh, yeah range 1 or range 2 so he only would have been able to roll one die anyway so it's just as well he missed since that would not have counted. But he rolled two dice and whiffed entirely. In the power phase, uh, Glory is being spent to give him the Grump upgrade purely because it is my favourite card because of the art on it. <laughs> and it doesn't actually, it's not relevant. It's not going to be relevant for the rest of the game. It's just a fun art card. What is relevant though is Angry Bellow, which is the other card eventually played by them. So let's just cover it now. Choose an enemy fighter within two hexes of Molag, stagger them. So obviously with there's one enemy left on the table, they're the one getting staggered. If I can look at the token with one hand, which as it turns out I can't. There we go. Memories of the Hunt is being applied to Dripper for one of their unspent glory. It just gives him plus one move and he's going to inspire when he activates now because um, Molag is next to him. So I think he's going to have five movement total. Oh, this is a mixture of catastrophic and sad. Oh, also, don't forget your stagger token, Drepper. So Drepper did a charge action with 5 movement and he got well away from Molag. He's out of his threat range, so he's safe from him. And he wanted to murder the Batsquig. And he tried. He gets 3 dice when he's inspired, looking for hammer still for 2 damage, which would have done it. And he whiffed. And that is just... He, he's going to miss out for the glory on the kill, obviously. It actually would have scored, what, 2 more cards? The, yeah, 2 more cards that would have scored a total of 3 glory if that had gone down and all the Batsweek needs to do is move now because then Hackfell, uh, Dripper won't be able to attack him because he, he's already got a charge action so he would only be able to move or attack so that I think just cost them the game. So yeah the back squig fleed, fled, fled to the top of the table to where you can see him and then an unspent glory was spent on chuck him in just so that Molag has the ability to chuck a frog since it might be relevant. You break the card to do it, it's a reaction after his activation and you get to pick one of the two effects that you can read on the card. It might not come up but again it's just pretty funny art. Well, the horse murder ghost is just desperately trying to chase down that bat squig and has done a movement action to get next to him. This is like the worst episode of Scooby-Doo that's ever existed. The Bat Squeak did another movement action and has moved over here. He is out of Dripper's threat radius. He would have to move to try and get him again. Although, hey, let's see, if he was to move here... Nope, no matter where he moves, the Bat Squeak can still get away because of his four movement. So, yeah, there's no way to catch him. So, in an effort to keep these briefer, since people did ask for more succinct content, we're not going to bother playing out the move he moves, they move, he moves, they can't catch each other and that's the only thing that we get dripper points. So we're just going to jump into the end phase of the third round now. So in the end phase and the end of the game it turns out even if dripper had had the perfect turn upon looking at everything that's happened it still wouldn't have been enough. He was on par to score three which I think I mentioned via the bat, well sorry a total of four if he'd killed the bat squig, one for the kill and three in total across two objective cards from the same action where he could get Sight Down and Unstoppable Death. They both would have scored. That would have been four, which in total would have given them eight. Not a great score, especially for the Murder Ghost, but it would have given them eight, which at this point would have been two ahead of where Molag is. But in the end phase, he is scoring three because of Trogoth Triumphant. So he's actually, he would have won by a single point had things gone perfectly for Dripper. You score this in the end phase if your warband took three or more enemy fighters out in the preceding action phase. They would have scored that last turn if this card was in hand. But there is a secondary condition. A friendly Molag is the only fighter in enemy territory. Look at him all confident there. He shattered the skulls of three horse ghosts. And he didn't even get really a, a good shot at Dripper. But you know that's the way it's going to go. He's going to collect all four of them into little bits and make a necklace. Or eat them. I don't know if he eats bones. Either way. That brings us to the end of the game with Molag, in this case because of how the points worked out, winning 9-4. to four. And off Molag goes into the sunset to try and find somewhere to have an another kip for a few thousand years. Thank you very much for watching, do let me know if you preferred me trying to be as succinct as possible and less rambly. 
a few people asked for it but I don't know if that's what the majority, the silent majority want so do let me know. Thank you for watching either way please do remember to show your support with liking, commenting or subscribing and if you can spare it you can go above and beyond and become a channel member it gives you early access to a few different video series helps the channel out you could also just check out the channel sponsor anything you buy from them via my affiliate link means I get compensated so we both get something out of it either way hope you enjoyed see you next time time for now